Hi, my name is Joanne Mitten and I'm the HR manager and quality assurance manager with ATC Language Schools. So uh, there's been, as you know, a lot of um, HR issues throughout the whole pandemic, but also um, my role would involve the operations within the school and getting people back into classes safely. So can I start by asking you again about the challenges that the pandemic has posed for your school and uh, for you and your role? Yeah, so the, the challenges at the beginning um, was the jump to um, online lessons in full. Um, and people were a little bit concerned about it and students were worried about going into online lessons. They didn't know what to expect. Um, and, but then as people settled in, um, they became really happy with what was happening online, but also keen to get back into the school. So the next challenge that kind of came out of that was getting the school ready for socially distanced learning um, and having masks and visors in classes um, and just making sure that people could come back safely. And there was a huge amount to that. You know, once once you start looking into that, there's um, avenues, you know, you're, you're taking down all sorts of different areas um, and you have to make sure that everything is covered and everyone is safe before they come back in. So I would say um, from a logistics point of view, those would be quite big challenges. But then on personal um, aspects, you know, students uh, did struggle a little bit being at home and feeling isolated. So they're at home in their home in Ireland, but they're they're isolated from their families back home and um, they don't get to see their classmates face to face. And um, so that was something that we really had to help them overcome. And um, there was some anxiety there. Um, one of the important issues, uh, important aspects of the HR role is the welfare um, of staff and by extension of, of students. How has that been, how have you, how has the response kind of evolved in, in, from that point of view? Um, I think our starting point um, when everything kind of came to the fore in March and April was um, much more communication with staff and um, lots of Zoom calls as, um, you know, with the teaching staff altogether, then with the whole staff, admin and academic, and then lots of catch ups um, with either myself or school directors face to face one on one with staff over Zoom. And I think that's one of the, the big things that's developed out of this is that um, communication has been um, constant and and has been very helpful. And I think that was the starting point to making sure um, that we're hearing staff's concerns and um, particularly with coming back into the school, we sent out a lot of surveys and emails to students, um, teaching and admin staff, uh, also host families. And taking all that on board has helped a lot with everyone's peace of mind because, they, well, I, I hope I'm right in saying this, but I get the impression that they feel that this isn't, decisions aren't just being made for them, they're being involved in the decisions, which I think is a huge thing for keeping people um, feeling safe and, and listened to. Um, you mentioned the feedback there. What would you say are the, 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 the things that, that you learned from the feedback uh, that informed uh, what you went on to do in terms of what students or staff were concerned about or needed support with or how they felt in general? Um, well, I learned that overall, you know, um, staff and students are all really, really responsible. And that was their main concern was that if they were to come into the school, were they doing the right thing? Were they sticking by um, government guidelines? How can they make sure that they're not putting themselves or anyone else in danger? Um, but they also came to us with lots of really good suggestions. So obviously we were following guidelines and following um, you know, government procedures, uh, but lots of really um, helpful suggestions came from staff and students as well, because they were so focused on coming back safely and, and doing the right thing. So that was a massive help. And I think I might have hedged around your question there. Was there another part of that question that I should have answered? No, no, no. It, it, it just um, in terms of what what they, yeah, what 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 they what how how their their feedback informed 
uh, the, the, the way things took shape in the end, I, both academically and in terms of safety wise and uh, uh, welfare, the welfare aspects of it as well. Um, yeah, well, um, academically, I think uh, it really helped us to, to get back on track because they were very keen to get back into the classrooms, but they were very vocal about the fact that they obviously needed classrooms to be distanced in the right way. And we had planned that. We had planned for small classes with two metre distance and masks um, in the class and all, all around the school, but we were worried about the reaction from students and teachers to that. But the feedback they gave us was that that was exactly what they wanted. Um, they didn't want to see us, um, you know, putting too many people and by too many it would be you know eight rather than six people in a class and um, they didn't want uh, us to be too lenient they they wanted to see us have um, pretty stringent measures in place and to make sure that they were once we were open that people had their eyes out and, and were helping people keep those measures in place so the feedback since we've been back is that the, the students and teachers have told us that they feel very safe with us and they're they're happy to see us rigidly stick by the rules. Um, whereas before, you know, in normal times, you, you know, people kind of want a little bit of leeway or they they want to be able to talk their way around things. But here, everybody really wanted the rules to be kept. So that that was very great for us. It made our jobs a lot easier. It also made the school feel very safe when we were in there. So you've gone from um, online delivery uh, to return to the classroom, but with um, social distancing and uh, precautions and all of that. How do you see the situation developing in the in the medium to long term? Uh, I think this is one of the most difficult questions. Uh, it's very, very hard to say uh, in the short and medium term how things will develop. But I think realistically, our school, and I think most schools, will need to have a combination of online and face-to-face -face classes. So when we open up again, and this time around, you know, we have, we've done it already, so we're very, very confident with bringing people back in a smooth way into the school. I also think it's essential that schools have um, parallel running um, online uh, classes because you need to be able to seamlessly, let's say a student or a teacher needs to self-isolate or a whole class needs to self-isolate, they need to seamlessly transition into online classes so that we don't have that stop-start feeling that we had back in March. Um, and I think schools are well capable of doing that and having that set up. So I think that's our short to medium term future is having this sort of parallel running of face to face and online and making sure that things are standardized across those two systems. Um, and from what we've seen in the short time where we've had it set up in ATC, it's really well received. So any students that come into this, the country and have to self isolate or um, even we have students who are abroad who are taking classes um, from their own countries. Uh, they find that the quality of the online classes are just the same as the the face to face classes, and that's where you'll find success. You know, if people are really happy with online, uh, as much as they are with face to face, then you can you can um, kind of merge the two pretty well. Do you think that when when students are choosing a school, or indeed uh, uh, somebody is is choosing where to uh, a school to work with uh, or study in? Are there new factors now on their mind when they're making that decision that wouldn't have been there before? Uh, absolutely, yeah. I think one of the, the first things that students would look for is um, really clear information on what to expect when they come to the school. So it's no longer just kind of booking a school and showing up. I think students expect um, a very clear maybe video induction uh, well in advance that that's available even before they they book the the, the classes um, and I think they expect um, at the very least FAQs on what to expect when they're in there um, but I, I think that the, what they're looking for is really high level of health and safety and uh, quality teaching whether it's online or face to face. And then if you would kind of summarize 
or trying to kind of wrap up by thinking about um, apart from how to operate Zoom, which we've all learned kind of uh, and those kind of technical things, what would you say uh, that you have learned as an organization uh, and, uh, and, and yourself as a, as a professional uh, that um, as a result of kind of going through this, uh, this challenging experience? Um, I think we've learned that the resilience and adaptability of staff and students is kind of incredible. Um, there are lots of things that you have in mind when you're running day to day and everything's normal. Uh, you've all these sort of plans and things that you're going to develop and it all, you know, it all seems to take a long time. But when you're pushed out of your comfort zone, the things that um, a school can achieve and the people within that school can achieve is actually amazing and they can do it in a very short space of time and do it really, really well. So I think everybody has kind of had that realization that change is difficult. You know, it's you, you have to be quite resilient to, to go through change quite quickly, but it is absolutely possible. And you can come out the other side with great things, new products, new ways of approaching things, um, whole new structures. Uh, and it's it's not this insurmountable thing that we used to think if you're pushed out of your comfort zone you can kind of achieve most things and one of the the things that kind of strikes me as we went from a uh, two week uh closed down to getting extended to six and 12 and maybe longer um uh, 18 months uh, is 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 the challenge of sustaining motivation both from the students and from the um from the staff point of view how have uh, you found kind of dealing with that, that aspect of it? I, I think we've been very lucky because we have a really great team around us in ATC. Um, I, because I actually feel that because every week almost throws up a new challenge, that that kind of uh, keeps things, um, what's the word it keeps things kind of fresh and and people are adapting to new challenges all the time so yeah working from home is is quite difficult and motivation can be tricky so I think communication and and lots of checking in with people and making sure they're okay is there anything that they need is there anything we can put in place to help them do do their jobs that's really important and um, but actually what I found um is that there's so much going on and so much that people are adapting to that it doesn't go stale at any point there's always a new kind of problem or challenge that we have to overcome almost every week yeah definitely <laughs> interesting interesting times uh, with, yeah. the, with the with the good and the bad of that yeah uh, is there anything else that you want to mention about uh uh how 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 you've been doing things and how you've hoped to to, to bring it forward um, well, I, I mean, I, I really have to say that we've been so lucky in ATC with the team that have been around us. So uh, I think once you have kind of positive people uh, throughout your organization, um, you know, problem solving rather than kind of dumping problems uh, is a massive thing um, going forward. And I think that's the way schools and, and all types of organizations are going to survive into 2021 and 2022. And um, that sort of positive outlook, problem solving and, and keeping motivated is, is the key to it. And we've been really, really lucky uh, in ATC with, with the team because they've come up with some amazing ideas uh, and pushed them through much quicker than you'd, you know, in normal times, you, you, things that you think would take a year or two years has happened in three to six months it's amazing <laughs> so now we're now into a period of kind of continuous change and uh, ongoing development yeah uh, there's no standing still i think from what you're saying there no i mean you just you just can't you just you never know what's going to crop up next but um i think it's how you react to those challenges is is what makes or breaks an organization <laughs>